Right now, I want to introduce my next guest, Daniel Odongo, who is 26, and he is popularly known as the blind pilot. Well, was I correct by saying that you're popularly known as the blind pilot? Yeah, it is true because from the history, I was born blind back on 24th August 1992 in Mumias, and uh, I was born blind. And because of that disability of blindness, the family separated, but I had to accept the condition to be brought up by an old grandmother. Life was very tough. That really affected me, but I thank God because somebody somewhere from a Catholic church nun came over and they picked me to Kibo School for the Blind. I was in the year 2006, sat for my KCP exams, had my best results, 350 marks out of 500. Oh, wow. I moved to Kika School for the Blind. You mentioned earlier that uh, you were being raised by your grandmother, your parents were not in the picture. So all throughout your school life, were your parents then back in the picture or it was still your grandmother raising you? No, my grandmother passed on after five years when I was taken up by a nurse. So the nurse had to take over the duty of parenting me from that time up to, to date. So do you have a relationship with your biological parents? Uh, not really that good until last year when uh, I had gone through university and also at the same time joined the aviation college when they realized that I had my sight back. And they said, wow, this could be our son. And you were blind for how many years before you got your sight back? I was blind for 20 good years. Okay. So uh, how did you get back your sight? My sight I got back when I was sick of cerebral malaria and a lot of stress during my second year. Cause, uh, that second year university? Yeah, second year university. I was sick of malaria. Then... Uh, after being treated at the health unit, I was taken to Kikuyu Eye Hospital. I was treated with malaria. Then after that, I was told to go back for further treatment. Then this lady who came around saying, Dan, you know what? I want you to go back to the hospital, take surgery. I told her, no, look here, I've been living with this kind of disability. In fact, it's my, it is like my normality. I don't need you to see because I'm comfortable the way I walk with my white cane, the way I touch, the way I can read so many things, I'm very much comfortable. So you didn't it want to be given false hope? For what reasons after living for all these kind of years with that sight? What because it's all you for? knew, being, you were blind your entire life. Yes, I was very comfortable and it was like my normality in that kind of a state. Now, after persisting so much, I said, okay, I'll do, I'll have to go for this surgery just to please you. But don't even ask me for a single coin because I know how my family relates with me and how the committee has also been relating with me. So I hope you won't lock me here in the hospital so that, that I don't go and finish up my degree. I said, okay, I'll see on how I can help out. I accepted, I went for this surgery. And uh, after a very long time of surgery, between 6 in the morning up to 5 in the evening, with more, than three, uh, with more than five doctors performing the same surgery and consulting one another. I was given a bandage, I was taken back to the ward the following day. They removed the bandage and then when somebody could pass the hand like this, I could see something moving, but I couldn't share with my people that I was seeing anything moving in front of me. Why, why couldn't you share? No, they could ask me what is that and I don't know. So they, oh, so that they would ask question. you, can you see anything and what would be your answer? I can't see anything. Yet you were seeing something. Yes. It's because you were not sure whether that was what seeing anything meant. Yes. Because you had never ask seen. You what is this? What do you answer? And I've never seen anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there you are. Just came from the surgery, and uh, your vision is slowly coming back. Yeah. Though fuzzy, not very clear. So what happens next? Uh, when I left the theatre, when I came back to the university, I wanted also to join others in the con in the pool. But they say, now, Dan, oh, your seat is supposed to be there. Why are you not sitting in front of the class? They will always sit. I told them, okay, I'm so comfortable sitting next to each other, each one of you here. Little did they know that I was having my sight back. So you had not told anyone at that point no, that you could see? No, how do you tell see? them? I couldn't tell them. Why? How do I even begin telling them how I have my sight back? If they could ask me right then your name on a piece of paper, and you see, the way you write in braille is not the same way we write in print. So I was very, a little bit shy and some are bright, so that if I tell them I'm seeing, they can ask me, okay, if you are seeing, write for us your name. And I do not write using a, a pen. So you were fearful yes. of this new life, or yeah. should I say this new lease on life. Good. So there you were, and I can imagine when you were blind, as a young boy, as a young man, mm -hmm. 
you, you, you must have been praying to God to give you your sight back. No, no. You never no, prayed no, even no, once? No, no. Because I know malice. You never wanted your sight back yes. because you had, you had accepted I'll be blind for life. Yes, I was so much comfortable with that because uh, that was my normality. So even going into the surgery, you went, Ile sasa, juwe unataka acha niende nifanyi. Yes, because but she you forced knew, me to be there. Yeah. It didn't know that she was wishing me well. But ulijua tu wata utenda, you'll just come out, you'll still be the same old, yes. nothing will change. Yes. So when the change comes now, you're the first one to be in denial. Yeah. Of course, I was very happy to get uh, that sight now that I could see things that I never wanted to share with people that I was seeing. So it took me like about uh, four to five months. Then four went, to five months? Yes, to go back so to the hospital. people who previously saw you as a blind man kept seeing you as a blind man despite yes. the fact that you could see. Yes, to me I knew things by touching, not by seeing. Seeing? Yeah. So you were learning now seeing? Yes. So if someone asks you what color is this, now you're like, oh, that is red. And uh, in fact, those people are very helpful to me. Those were small, small kids in the village, in Madare there. I could ask them, what do you learn today? You learn alphabetical letters. How do you write letter A? No, look at this. You're so big and you know how to write even alphabetical letters. So you would learn from the kids yes. in secret? Yes. So they could show me how to write alphabetical letter, both a capital and small letters. I said, oh, that's good. Now, in 2014, I went back to the same hospital to thank the doctors who, did the, who performed the surgery. They were very happy and they told me, Dan, you have to go back to the theatre for the second surgery. This time round, I couldn't argue so much. I said, please, let me even go right now. <laughs> and I went there. I got my sight back on the right eye. Then so before it was just one eye, the left eye, then eye, after the, the second surgery, eye. it was now the right eye. The right eye. Okay. Now here I'm able to see. I'm able to write with a pen. I said, no, let me confirm whether I'm able to see. I went to seniors driving school in Dandora. I was given a Leyland lorry. I was able to get my driving license BC class. Then I called my mother, I told my mother, do you remember that uh, I was born blind? Then because of my blindness, the family separated? Yes, we remember very well. Right now I'm seeing and I can drive a car in Europe. They said, please. Would you say that perhaps for you this life trauma, and I say life trauma simply because you were born blind and then in your adulthood, you get your sight back because it's a lot. Dactarian, maybe just let me just rope in Dactari here. It's a lot for anyone. Yeah, I agree. It's a, it's a lot. When a child is born blind, the milestones they achieve are related to what capacities they already have. So he could not see, therefore, he developed the touching and the feeling and not the sight. Therefore, he knew nothing by sight. Seeing, yes. Yes, because children will learn through the sensory organs, but that one was absent. And definitely it's traumatic also for the parents, particularly in, uh, in setups where no, 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 no therapy is given to parents who have such children. And uh, well, I thank God for, for, for the VC then who helped him. That tells us that uh, when we meet people who can intervene in our situations, then we are likely to bounce back and achieve our, uh, our life dreams. And, and I think even with him, what yeah. you can catch is even when you were blind, he was still a brilliant yes. child. Yeah? Even with the you know, yeah. inability of seeing, look at the marks he scored. And then even the, for lack of a better word, the craftiness of hiding from people that he was seeing, even if it was in one eye and keeping up the rules, that's a, that's a bright mind. Yeah, that's what we call resilience. Yeah. He, he, he had this uh, disability in terms of sight, but all the other capacities were present. And in his makeup, he was able to exploit those ones, which is very, very excellent uh, of him. But I also noticed that the, the, what we made find odd, that he could not accept that he is seeing. And, and you can understand why. Developmentally, you're not sure of where you're going, but he's aware of where he has come from, and he has been managing. So that fear of the unknown, the fear that th those uh, opportunities he had, has had may just disappear. Simply now he's, he has this sight that everyone else has. 
have you seeked help? Like, did you have to go through some counseling once now your vision came back fully? I never had to go for counseling. To me, I used to be a pastor, even in the university or the high school. I could preach what I don't know, but I just knew that I was touching people's life. And uh, the many times I used to tell people that I ought to become a pilot, they could say, Dan, I think we'll take you to Mother Mental Hospital. Reason that you are not seeing and you want to become a pilot. This is very much impossible. And I told them, time will determine, but very sure I'll become one. My first time to be on board on Jumbo Jet from Nairobi here to Mombasa, I remained sitting in the aeroplane. They asked me, what are you doing here? How do we help you? I told them I want to speak to the pilot. They said, no, you need to have an appointment. I told them, yes, I don't have an appointment. I agree with you, but I'd love to speak to him. They said, this won't happen. So I told them, well and good. If you are ready to carry me, go ahead. But I have to speak to him. So after hearing all that argument, he said, OK. He opened his door. He came out and he talked to me. He said, I'm Captain Duke. How do I help you? I told him, Danny Lodongo. I was born blind, have my sight back, and also want to become a pilot. I enjoyed the journey from Nairobi to Mombasa, and also want to become one. He said, ah, I've never had a single passenger ask me for this kind of favor. Because of asked, get my card. Let's meet at Wilson Airport, and that's how my journey to become a pilot was real. So, you're currently training, or have you finished your training? I've done the PPL, the ground school that I'm done with. Then uh, it's about a matter of adjusting the hours, and especially in the environment from Madari, where you move from one office to another, selling such kind of ballpens at 100 shillings to raise some 40,000 to pay for the ground school from ground school. You have to pay every hour you go up in the skies, 20,000. You have to pay for the navigation, you have to buy the uniforms, you have to buy the bus, you have to buy these. It is not easy. So you struggle, you struggle, you struggle. But along the way, with the media coverage, I had to get some support from Amagina Kenyatta and also the president when he met back in 25th of May 2018. And they are supporting your education now? Not really. They just came here to support for a few hours. But she called uh, CS Amina and asked her kindly, to get me a scholarship as a father for the CPL. But currently, I'm still a student, had work very much determined, very much focused, that very soon, from out of selling these pens, I'd also become a pilot with passion. Dan, would you say that you have been depressed at any point? Depression was there, especially now that I have this chance to go to the university. My brother has put every plan that I had has go to the donors who used to support me, the nuns, they no longer have that trust and believe in me that uh, this uh, issue coming up with a fake admission letter. At one point, I wanted to take, uh, I took Ratchat in the house, thinking that I'll die. But I went up again taking a uh, soapy water. It controlled the whole thing. I went for uh, another treatment. It was well. I also, second attempt I made to get myself in the middle of the highway, but no car came knocking me. I survived, but I said, now what is this? Okay, yeah. so when you walked into the road, this was in Rungai, next to multimedia, I understand. Yeah. Okay, right now, how are you coping? How long have you had your sight back for? I've only had my sight back for the last uh, five years. Okay. And uh, as I was celebrating yesterday, they were also giving me a home coming back to the nuns. My father and I were able to eat from the same plate using the same spoon that was able to separate us that long time ago. 